I just wanted to say thanks to Mr. Fernie. Uh, he and his wife were able to help us get these nectarine trees that you're going to see us plant here in a few minutes. So thanks, Mr. Fernie, and go check out his channel. He uh, does a lot of gardening, indoor gardening, and knows a lot about plants and how to grow them and uh, cool channel. So thanks. Hi, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Um, thanks for watching my premiere this morning. Uh, please like and subscribe. Um, you can see here I've got a hole. We had bought a plum tree three years ago and it never actually produced fruit. So we have bought, uh, we bought nectarine trees, right? We bought some nectarine trees. And so we took um, that plum tree out, but we are trying to save, save it. So we're gonna wrap the root, I'll show you here in just a minute. And we're gonna take it up to our homestead because the plums, it's too cold up there for the plums to grow. Hey, Mittens. But uh, it would be a great sh uh, shade tree. And then down here, we'll use the nectarine trees and try to continue our prep and growing fruit. So you can see we've got, uh, we've got, uh, this one's a peach, right? So pear, peach, uh -huh. nectarine, six kinds of apple on the same tree. Yep. Missionberry and Bing Cherry. And some strawberries there too. Yeah, and Bing Cherry. Okay. So, just adding some more trees. Um, might as well use the space. And um, hopefully that will... Hopefully we, went, we haven't killed that tree and we'll put it up at the homestead and it'll make a good shade tree. So, trying to get a two for one, I suppose. Okay, so here's the root ball. Uh, I'm going to have to help Crystal... Uh, lift it up so that she could put that bag on there but the idea is we're going to try to keep some of the moisture in and hopefully I got enough of the tap root that it'll grow we'll see I thought it might explain quick too you see there's a, a old stump here the reason that this didn't ever produce plums is because it was a dwarf and when they dwarf a tree they start out with the base of another tree and then they splice a different tree on top of it. So this was most likely a flowering plum tree, which are very hardy and grow quickly on our cheap. Um, and, it, and they spliced a branch from a fruit producing plum tree on top of it. It was supposed to be an English plum. Um, but this part that was the top died off and this new tree that grew out grew from below the line where it was spliced. So the, basically the, the original tree took over. So it might produce a nice shade tree. Yes. If we can get it to take up there. So right. elevation difference is quite a bit too. So we're putting some water here in this uh, rubber trash, or the plastic trash can. And we're just, you can see we've got the old Christmas tree bag around it. And the idea is we're just gonna try to keep some moisture in there so that hopefully uh, We'll be able to transplant it. So, yeah, so I got to water the trees over there that were taking up the parapet. Yep, those are the ones that we're taking up. Uh, we got a pine tree there, blue spruce, right? Blue spruce, all of them are blue spruce. And then, uh, oh yeah, there's the little ones too. And then we've yeah. got some crab apple trees. And Four then, we've got the tractor ready to go now um, so that we can use the post hole digger to to dig the holes to plant them. So here, I'll show you the little blue spruce here. So projects, projects, projects. So there's the little ones. So we have a tradition that we started this year is uh, we buy a pine tree of some kind and we that becomes our Christmas tree. And then we'll plant it each year on our homestead. So that over time, we'll have many trees up there and also we'll have the memory of having had them for Christmas. Kind of fun. Okay. Okay, so um, where the other tree was at isn't quite where the, the new trees need to be. So I'm gonna widen this hole, plant the new tree, and then I will backfill all this other space out. And we'll try to take as many of the uh, grass clumps as we can and wait until that's very end and so we can try to salvage the yard a little bit. So we'll see.
So this is our compost bit. It's just um, some pallets with stakes holding it up. And I put the uh, chicken manure from every time we clean out the coop. Um, go deeper there, please, dear. Um, on top of everything and turn it every once in a while, as well as pine needles and leaves and grass from the yard. You just don't want to have the um, newer big chunks of stuff. If you dig down to the bottom, the stuff that's been decomposed a little more is what you want to put into your hole. Um, especially the manure parts and stuff um, can be too hot, can actually burn the roots because it actually creates heat as it decomposes. I have basically the wheelbarrow full because we're gonna, we've got a lot of space to fill with that hole. And I'll use most of the rest of this in a couple of weeks when we um, fill the garden boxes. Yep. Mm-hmm. And my planting boxes will be done before too long. We got seeds started. Very bottom is the best, the most decomposed. Oh. Those be crushed up. I usually try and crush the eggshells before they get into here, but if everybody's helping with me with the compost, it doesn't always uh, get done. there. She's loaded up. Time to take it to the front. Bushes, time to come back. Oh, 
on. Just bring it out too. Kind of see one of the goldfish down there. They're harder to spot. Everything's gonna be cleaned out for spring. Not yet. Give it a minute. All right, time to set up. Okay, she's getting the tree ready to plant. Bad amount of root. <laughs> Right, ready for me to dump it in? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we've got the compost there. And then you're gonna mix some just dirt in there, right? right the soil that was in the so I think we got it plenty deep though. So we'll get this one all squared away and then we'll do a part two where we plant the other tree, but and I'll show, and then that one will show you what it looks like when you get everything all filled back in. But we'll get this one planted, and that'll be enough for, for this video. Okay, so Crystal's kind of filling it in. She's mixed the just the soil with the compost, and now she's putting the glass grass clumps back around it. So. Here's another clump. Like I said, we got two trees, and uh, so we'll just do another video, and that we'll plant the second tree, and then I'll backfill this hole in so that, as best as possible, I put the clumps back in, and then as soon as the grass starts growing again really heavy, it'll grow right into it. Yeah. And I already hit that with water, so the ground's pretty wet. But uh, I'll probably hit it again with a little bit of water, and then tomorrow a little bit too. Even though it's spring, that way uh, get it off to a good start. So looks pretty good for now, I think. Okay. So anyway, I'll go ahead and stop there. I'll throw a little more dirt on it, um, but uh, that'll be one of our new nectarine trees. So thanks for helping me plant it, hon. Love you.